gift. And sometimes we think the gift is, is his son who is really the gift giver. He is the reason we have the gift because the gift God had for us, we couldn't receive it unless he died for us. And the greatest gift of all is the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we think it's something special we have to do. And some people drum it up and they have all night services so people can receive the Holy Spirit. But let me tell you, I was one of those people like the people we're about to talk about in a few minutes. And we're going to trace through that. And I hope by the time you take communion, you know you have received the Holy Ghost. You know, you're, everybody in here, if they're not saved, are getting saved. Yes. But all of us need the Holy Spirit to be sanctified. Yes. Yes. To become holy. Yes. I know in my sins I'd have never got out of them without the Holy Spirit. Right. And every day He's with me to give me strength. And some of us like to make Him seem to be a mystery, but He's not a mystery. <laughs> oh, not at all. If you want Him, you can have Him. Yes. If you desire Him, come and receive Him. That's all that it takes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There were some people in Acts chapter 10 we're going to start with today. And I hope you bear with me. I hope you got rid of some devils with last week's message. <laughs> I know I had to do that. I tried. I don't like a lot of confusion, so I, I give up quickly when this confusion. So I won't have nothing to do with that. Uh, you know, there was a, a lot going on in the early church. The early church thought it was just about the Jewish customs. And if you wanted to be a part of it, you got to be circumcised, you got to be this. You couldn't be uh, from another country. I mean, it was all confusion. They really didn't realize that God called all of us to be saved. Yeah. From China to America, all of us are called to be saved. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus died for all men. He said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. Amen. You know, we like to think everybody's different and everybody's this and that, but in God, there is no favoritism. We all call to be with him. Yeah. In heaven, that's going to be every tribe, race, creed, all of them who are called by God are going to be rejoicing up there. You better get used to a lot of different people down here because it's going to be really a lot of different people in heaven. Yeah. Or you ain't going to belong there. But the good news for us is that Jesus, he, he gave the gift to the church. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. But he wanted the church to spread the gift. He wanted the ministry of the Holy Spirit to fill his church. He wants it to be filled all over the world. It's just not good enough just to preach the gospel. We want the Spirit to move in the church. We want the church to move by the Spirit. We do our best here that Whatever we do, we do it as unto the Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be doing what I want. I want to do what God wants. Yeah, hallelujah. 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 That takes the Holy Ghost. Let him move in your life. When you know you haven't been here, trust what he says. He is the unction that will direct you to all truth. He's patient with you. He has gifts to give you. He has ways to get you to, to the gifts for you to do, to give to your whole church. The Holy Spirit is the one that's working it all out for us. He's holding back the devil. Putin may think he's the devil, but the Holy Ghost is holding him back. So that God's desire is that all men are saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, in, in, in Acts chapter 10, y'all with me so far? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> See, for us to receive the Holy Spirit, we have to come to God. God set up something with Cornelius, his friends, and his family, and his household, that he might come to, to God, and, and that they would just believe. They were devout people. They, were, they didn't know Jesus. They just had no idea. So the Lord set it up where they could meet Peter. They hadn't heard the gospel. They just was directed by the Holy Spirit through an angel to go and meet Peter somewhere so they could hear the gospel. You know, faith comes by what? Hearing. They hadn't heard. You and I say, well, it, how did, could they not hear? Remember now, they didn't have TV and radio and, and all that stuff. They barely had books. So people heard the gospel from one person going to another. I don't even trust hearing the gospel on TV no more. I'd rather hear it from somebody who've experienced it that I know. But we 
do hear the gospel all on the TV networks, all on the radio. So to us, we can't understand a people that had not heard what Cornelius, he had not heard. He, he was itching to hear. In chapter 10 of Acts, and bear with me, I'm going to skip through it a little bit for the second time. It says, at Caesarea, y'all see that verse 1? Yeah. There was a man named Cornelius, centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord, he asked. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. About noon the following day, as they were the, on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became angry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheep being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do read it with me. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Or don't call anything unclean that God has cleaned. Y'all see that? This happened three times, and immediately the sheep was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wandering about, wondering about the meaning of the vision. The men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the, the men, I am the one you are looking for. Why have you come? Then men, the men replied, We have come from, from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and good God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guest. See, Peter had to see that vision to stop him from thinking that the Jews were all there was, and that circumcision was all there was. In other words, if God cleans anything, if God takes care of it, makes it pure, then who are you to make it to say it's unclean? Who are you? Because you know all the sins of somebody and all the trash they've done for you to tell them when they tell you they're born again, to tell them they're still unclean. Who are you to take anybody's past and try to pin their sins on them forever when God has washed them in his own blood. In other words, Peter, who do you think you are? If I have purified them, what, who are you to say they're not? If I have called them, who are you to say they can't receive them? So that's what Peter got out of the vision. He knew he was in trouble. Because <coughs> all his life he was told, that food up in that net, don't you eat that. And the Lord said, what do you mean you're not going to eat it if I purify it? Who are you? What well, God cleans, let me tell you, brother, it is clean. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know what you know about it or what you think about it. If God has purified them, be quiet, shut your mouth, and praise God. Yeah. I'm sorry, y'all, but I do wish you do that. Hallelujah. But listen, the next day, Peter started out with him, and, and some of the believers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was inspecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. Oh, so Cornelius ain't just got this for himself. He heard Peter was coming. He called everybody in the neighborhood. Yeah. 
He wants everybody to hear what he has to say. See, you don't have a Bible, don't have a TV. I want to hear what this man has to say. Because in the hearing of what he says, there's something special about that. Mm -hmm. See, we don't take it special anymore when we come to church and hear the word. That's something about a living word of God that changes you deep within. Yes. Yeah. They were hungry to hear what Peter had to say. They were devout that they actually gave to the poor. They did what they thought they had to do. They tried to obey even Jewish customs even. But something told them there must be more. Yeah. I'm not just a good man. I feel like there got to be more. So an angel told him, oh, it, it is more. Yeah. How many of y'all think that's much more of God? Oh, yes. 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 So he knew that there was more. So he went to look for somebody to tell him what that is. And that very next day, Peter started out with them. And some of the believers from Joppa went along. The following day, arrived in Caesarea, Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man. Some of y'all treat preachers like that God. Not in this church. Don't get me in no trouble. Have to take me out. I'm trying to live. <laughs> They're not God. If you go to Chapel Tunes Chapel, and they ask you who the pastor is, they want you to come and see. <laughs> While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. That's pitiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. Good thing he learned. So when I was sent for, I came. Say, when I was sent for, I came. In other words, he wasn't scared to get in the Gentile's house. He's not afraid anymore because God said, I can't call nobody unclean. So when I was sent for by a Gentile, not only a Gentile, but a centurion soldier, <laughs> Lord have mercy. You don't get more impure than that. A Roman soldier. I came. I moved because God said, ain't nobody impure. Yeah. Some of y'all see people in certain lifestyles. We talked about that a little last week. My wife is very patient with people, y'all. Don't let me fool you about that. And we receive people just the way they are. Yes. Ain't my job to clean up nobody. That's the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost job. Y'all yes. know that? Yes. That ain't your job. Pray for me. Yes. Stop trying to slap everybody on the wrist about not doing what you do or what you think. God ain't made nothing impure that he can't make pure. Yes. Let him have his way. Hallelujah. Say, Holy Ghost, come and have your way. Holy Ghost, come and have your way. Stop being God. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius answered, three days ago I was in my house praying at this hour, at three in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send, a, send to Joppa for Simon who is called Peter. He is a guest in the house of Simon the Tanner who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen, say listen, yes. to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. That's what I want to know. I want to hear what the Lord told you to say. Don't come telling me what you want to say. I want to hear what the Lord said. Yes. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show, say it with God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is what? Right. right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. 
You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth and the Holy Spirit and power. See that? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Yeah. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. And the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin. Say it with me. Everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. Did y'all hear that? Everyone. No category. No Muslim. No Chinese. No African. No Canadian. Everybody who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. We just can't think like that Everybody. While Peter was still speaking these words, guess what happened? The Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished at the reading with me. The gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. Say, even on Gentiles. Even on Gentiles. Can somebody say, even on me? Even on me. The gift of the Holy Spirit can be poured out on me. Yeah. You don't show no favoritism. Yeah. Even on me. Yes. What a great gift. Yes. Yes. That don't matter who you are. He can pour his spirit out on you. Yes. He did it on me. Yeah. He did it on my wife. He did it on my children. And he's doing it on you. And some of you sitting here right now don't yes. even know he did it on you. Because yes. yes. some of you don't feel worthy. Some of you feel like you, you're stuck somewhere. You can't get out. But you know the Holy Spirit is poured out on all flesh. Yes. If they desire and they believe in Jesus Christ. Yes. Some man, someone may ask me, how do you hear from God? How do you know you hear from God? Well, I hear from the Holy Spirit. Because yes. he's been poured out on me. Yes. How many of y'all want to receive all that? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Did you know all you got to do is come? You know this man, this man had invited a Jew in his house. Don't you think that the reverse was not true? Cornelius was taking a chance too. A Roman centurion inviting Jewish people in his house. What an awesome thing that we can break down those barriers where God doesn't care about that. He doesn't show no favoritism. He wants us all saved. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, how did he know they had the Holy Spirit? Listen, the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. For what did they hear? For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, surely no one can stand in the way of their being, them being baptized with water. They have received, say, they have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in what? The name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. They want to hear more. They don't start popping up, praying in tongues, and praising God. Yeah. Now what's going to happen to you if people just start praying in tongues and praising God? Some of y'all going to freak out and run out that back door. <laughs> Some of y'all been told people praying in tongues, something wrong with it. I got some good news for you. That's a gift that can be poured out on anybody without favoritism if they desire and they believe in Jesus Christ. Yes. And I tell you, I wouldn't be standing here today if it were not for the Holy Spirit being poured out on me. Yes. Man didn't give me that gift. God gave it to you. And it's a gift that comes from God. Yes. All you need to do is come to Him. Yes. Yes. And be open to receive without bias and favoritism and fear. Just have faith in God. That's all. 
I thought my middle name was stupid. Because my dad said, boy, you're just so stupid. You trust everybody, anybody. I had a guy come up to me on my first communion. I had my little wife, you know, y'all, some of y'all heard me tell this story. And I was at my grandmother's house, and they pinned a little money on you when you make your first communion. And this guy named Ivy Lee, I'll never forget it, came up to me and said, I go get you some candy from the store. <laughs> if you give me that money, I'll. I said, okay. <laughs> I gave him the money. I didn't see him again. Then I went back to the house. I said, boy, where your money at? I said, I gave the Ivy League. He, to, he said, you're just so stupid. Boy, I'm coming back. <laughs> he ain't going to bring you no candy, and you ain't going to get your money back. That's a story that I have lived through my life. Sometimes God protect people like me, don't he? <laughs> By the way, he was shot and killed when he got over. So, I mean, I didn't do it. I, I mean, I, didn't, I wasn't happy about it either. But you can't, you, know, you can't just do what you want to do to other people. Even in a small family, you got to watch who you do it to. Yes. You don't know who that person might be. Sure, I didn't know who I was at six years old. But some of us need to understand in our innocence we can find God. If we stop putting barriers there, things people have told you about the Holy Ghost, things people may. See, I never was in my thought process. Somebody said, Come in, I want to lay hands on you and pray for you. I said, Okay. They prayed for me, laid hands on me, and I started praying in tongues. He didn't say, you want to pray in tongues? No, he just said, can I pray for you? I just start praying in tongues. My wife said, now, I don't know what that is you got. What's going on here? You're going in that closet, praying in another language. She was like, OK. She was gathering her children, getting ready to get out of the house, y'all. <laughs> but she said, if that's real, I'm going to that church myself next Sunday. So we all packed up our little cells. Was, it was one or two kids then. And we went to this church, and when they had that altar call, she said, she got herself up like, hey, if this real, let me see. That man laid hands on her, and she went out praying in spirit. God wants you to come. He doesn't want you to think that everything that he has is free. That's free. See, we're so used to working for everything and earning and studying for it. You know, like, go to Bible school. That's how you get it. No. They got a lot of people in the Bible school got PhD, do not have the Holy Ghost. Yes. It's free. Say free. Free. It costs you nothing. It just got to come with an open heart. Cornelia was open. I just want to hear it. I just want to know it. We got all kind of obstacles and religions that keeps us from having everything God has for us. Right. Everything. We have to be innocent in our hearts just to say, I just want more of God. I just want more of God. I'm not thinking about a religion. Peter almost missed serving God. And all of the circumcised believers with him, they caused him a lot of trouble because they were not happy that uncircumcised Gentiles have received the Holy Spirit. What kind of religion is this that these uncircumcised heathens get the Holy Ghost? I pass the church every morning walking to the school or going to my grandmother's house. They were getting down with guitars and singing, and I used to get out there and jump and do the Popeye out in front of the church. <laughs> and they were praying and singing in another language, and we like, them people is weird up in there. <laughs> I can tell you their names, they all did. But every day, I mean, they used to be getting down on them guitars. I mean, getting down and dancing, tambourines going, and praying in tongues and praising God. It's good to praise God. Yeah. It's good to praise Him. The Spirit is good. There's nothing wrong with dancing for the Lord. There's nothing wrong with praying the tambourine. There's nothing wrong with lifting your hands up to Him. Something is wrong with people who think they got to hold back from God. I live for his praise. Hallelujah. Some of y'all got to let your hair down a little bit. Uh, that's a figure of speech. If you ain't got no hair, let me just rub it. 
But sometimes we just kind of loosen up. Yes. God wants to give you things free yes. that cost you nothing. Just receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go with me to uh, John chapter 4. I've preached this a lot. One of these days, y'all going to surprise me and going to receive this word. And some of you have received and don't even know you have because you're afraid to release it. It's a fear of releasing it. I don't want people to hear that. But remember, Cornelius wasn't even baptized, was not even circumcised. He didn't go through no ritual. He just received the Holy Spirit. And Peter said, how can I stop him from baptizing? These searches that say, you got to go to class and you got to do this to get baptized. Well, if the Holy Spirit got there praying in tongues, what they got to go to class for? God has already chosen. All you do is bring on that water and baptize him. In this church, all you got to do is confess Christ. I'm not going to take you to school. Just believe. We're going to get two or three witnesses and look you right in the eyes before you get that water to see if you really believe. Yeah. Or we're not going to baptize you. And some of y'all believe that got that water and the devil came right after that and said, you don't believe nothing. Because <laughs> you need to receive the Holy Ghost. The Bible says he is the spirit of truth. Yes. You need to be rooted and grounded in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, look, that was a woman and she was just like Cornelius and, the, and these uh, centurion, the centurion. It was, she was just like, she was despised by Romans. But she came to this well, remember her? I love that lady, because I'm always in there trying to check her out. I mean, read about her. <laughs> brother Kevin, you caught that. You know how to read group quick, brother. You and Sister Bobby and her got something in common. Don't get out of hand, brother. It's not co work. <laughs> Chapter 4. Y'all remember that lady, don't you? But I'm going to have to read it all because we've done that a lot here. But she wanted, uh, she came in the middle of the day. Ain't nobody going to be out there with her. She not only is a Samaritan woman, which she's in Samaria, but the people know she is a loose woman. Whatever you want to call it. The apostles didn't even want to go that way because they don't go through Samaria to go nowhere. Samaritans were despised and rejected. Descendants of Abraham. Just like Muslims of today, despised and rejected. Descendants of Abraham. So we don't want to go that way. But Jesus not only went that way, he stopped at the well, stayed in town. Listen, the man didn't just walk through or walk around, he stayed there. Standing at the well, that woman, that woman coming there, and, and Jesus, and she said, uh, Jesus said, will you give me a drink? I'm skipping a little bit. And she said, Jews don't even don't come here to drink nothing. What's wrong with you? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And verse 10 says, Jesus answered her, if you knew, say gift, the gift of God, and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you what? Living water. Living water. Y'all want living water this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus answered her, Everyone who drinks the water, this water, the water at that well, will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Say, never thirst. Never. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. In other words, that water is going to bring you to eternal life, it's going to refresh your soul. Every time you feel like giving up, it's going to pop up and you're going you're gonna to be refreshed again. Every time you fall down, he's going to remind you that Jesus died for your sins and that grace is going to abound on you. He's not going to hold you down in guilt or condemnation. He will convict you of your sins, but he will not condemn you. The Holy Spirit will raise you up every time until you get to eternal life. Over and over again, when you get thirsty, when you get separated from God, when you get tired of this old life, how many of y'all ever got tired of this old life? 
See, even the young people have, so I know you old people have, you just don't want to say it. Mr. Taylor Rachel, you know you've got tired. <laughs> you ever got tired of this old life? But see, the Holy Spirit is like water that revives you. See, and, and see, the more you, you're worshiping and praying in Him, the more alive you become, because that's living water. Say, that's living water. That's living water. I need some living water this morning. Something to keep me going when I get weary and tired and frustrated, when I fall down into sin thinking I'm, I'm doomed to hell. I need that something in me that raises me up. When the devil comes against me trying to condemn me to hell, I need the truth to be in me, alive. I need a drink of living water. Yeah. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water. See, that woman was smarter than y'all, than some of us. That woman said, give me some of that. I want some of that. See, now if it was a beer or drugs or wine, some of y'all said, oh yeah, I drink some of that. <laughs> But if the Holy Ghost offers you a free gift from God, living water, not even in a bottle, don't have to pay for it, don't have to go to the bar, just receive it. Can't receive something to it. No labels on it, not for certain people and not for others. And God says, take it, it's free. That woman said, give me some of that. I had everything else and nothing satisfies me. I had five husbands, ain't none of them did enough for me to make me happy. Some of the ladies say amen. But I need some living water. You, you say you got that, give it to me. And Jesus said to her, well, he told her what she had was five husbands. Uh, you don't have to read that. That's, that's that woman business that Jesus told us stuff. Well, let's read Jesus said to her, you are right when you, are, when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Did that stop Jesus from talking to that woman? No. Did Jesus say, get away from me, you sinful woman? No. Did he call all the Pharisees and say, each one of y'all get a stone and stone that old adulterous woman? No. Did he say, you're a Samaritan, get away from me? No. no. He said, I know who you are. He knows who you are too. So what's stopping you from receiving everything God has for you? He already know you. Say, so he already know you. He already know you. I just need to ask for a little more. He's not a respected person. He said, I don't show no favoritism. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain. But you Jews claim that the place where we, would, we, we must worship is Jerusalem. <clears throat> See, now God about to get rid of every religion. So some of y'all say you're Catholic. Some of y'all say you're Baptist. Some of y'all say you're whatever. Muslim, you're this, you're that. And Jesus said, man, woman. He said, woman. I'm going to say man too, okay? Man, woman, believe me. A time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers, say true worshippers, will worship the Father in what? In spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God's spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit, in the spirit, and in truth. That's a capital S. Are you worshiping God in spirit, Holy Ghost, and truth? That's how he wants you to worship. That's how he wants you to worship. Today, when you get ready to take communion, ask God to just fill you with the Holy Spirit. See, that's not something you get one time. You can ask him to be filling you all the time. That fountain never goes dry. Yeah. It's always trying to pull out, trying to pull out, yes. trying to pull out. While you just beat yourself down, wear yourself out, the Holy Spirit, that fountain, is just ready to pour into you. Yeah. There's a scripture where Elijah just kept bringing, uh, told this uh, person, this woman who had lost her husband, and told her, just keep getting jars, and the oil going to keep flowing. I'll fill every one of them. 
He'll fill up every one of you. Yes. You jars of clay. Yes. He'll fill us up. I don't know if you've ever been thirsty and tired and weary. Come Holy Spirit, fill me. Yes. Come Holy Spirit, fill me. Come Holy Spirit, fill me. Listen, today I will have so much scripture, but we don't get ready for communion. But I want you to know there's a gift that keeps being poured out on you. And all you do is have to open your mouth wide and receive it and let God be God in you. Because when you're tired and you get weary, you get sick and you get down, you run into trouble, you go down in pits, you're going to need something to lift you up. Yes. I've been there so many times where well, I had no more strength in me but the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But the Holy Ghost. He rose up and he keeps me. And he keeping you too. Mm -hmm. Today I want you to say, God, I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Isaiah says, come all ye who are thirsty, okay. come to the waters. And, I, and you don't even need no money. You don't have to buy it. Isaiah 55 1 says, come, come to the waters and drink. Just come and drink. Stop trying to think of reason why you can't receive. You can. A centurion, despised centurion, Roman soldier could. A woman who was a Samaritan could. And when you get to heaven, that same water of life is going to be flowing through that city. And you can keep on drinking and stay in eternity forever. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 22. <sighs> I want you to just say, I got to come. He ain't going to just bring me water. I got to go get it. I got to want it. Who are you trying to satisfy me and make you happy? My wife would tell you, and I'm not just picking at her, because she's the one I know the best. She would tell you in a minute, I can't make her happy like God can. God makes her happy. I get jealous sometimes. She out there giggling and feeling good and praising God all night long, 12, 1 o'clock at night. I can't hardly sleep with all that. Now she know that truth, but she's going to say, why are you talking? <laughs> But the joy of the Lord will give you strength. Yes. You need to say, come on, because I need more, I need more. I don't care what people say, what my religion said, how long I've been going without. I'm dry and I'm thirsty and I yes. need you more. Yes. How many of y'all can say that? Yes. Listen, I want you to see, even in eternity, chapter 16, chapter 22 of Revelation, the last chapter of the Bible, this one, much has been written that's not even in this book. But you got something that is verified. Hallelujah. Verse 17 says, read it with me. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes to take the say, free gift of the water of life. Yes. I got a free gift for you today. And every time you come to church, and every time you open your Bible and pray, ask God to feel you. And every time you think you feel forsaken and dry and don't feel like life is in you, come. Come to you. The fountain never stops for you. Say, pour over me, Lord. Pour over me, Lord. I'm tired and I'm weary. I know my days are numbered, but today I just need a little drink from the well of life. Yeah, yeah. Come Holy Ghost. Come Holy Ghost. I'm so thirsty. I'm so tired. You ever been tired? You ever been thirsty? Yeah. Ask it. And go and get it. You ever seen a fountain come to you? No. I think you better go get your drink, huh? <laughs> you sit in your bed and you say you're thirsty and you waiting for that water to come out that fountain. Uh, <laughs> he has a fountain. 
Tell me, turn it on over you. Pour over me. Almighty God, your precious name. We come to the water, but we want to drink. Not from the well that gives my body a cool drink, but the well of life that gives my soul a drink. Fill my soul up right now. Say, fill my soul up right now with the water of life. Come, Holy Ghost. I need you, Lord. I need you. Only you can pour your spirit into me. I ask it in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm ready to receive the Spirit in me. Come in me, Lord. I don't have to drum you up, think you up. I just need to open up. Yes. Say open up. Open up. And receive. receive. Open up and receive. It's not because of you that God is holding it back because you don't open up to receive. But you will. After this message, how many of y'all gonna receive? Raise your hand. How many of y'all gonna receive? Why do I worry about my life? Today, just worship me. You've come to my rescue a thousand times. Every other voice, it is a lie. God provides. God provides in ways I can't explain and can't deny. Little that I have, it multiplies. When I feel He won't show up on time, God provides. You come through when the clouds of doubt rain down on you. Test everything thought in you. Now you finally see what God can do for you. So tonight. Close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. What God provide? God provide. It's hard to say when there's no food to eat. What you feel that life will be. Just the things that I see And I feel it can't control my destiny God, I only want what you believe from me So tonight, close your eyes, there's no more need God provide.
betrayed. 